Okay, what we're going to do is just cover the things that we covered in class so that you guys have a firm foundation in that because it's important to have a firm foundation. So uh, we talked about multiplication and division in different mod groups. And uh, in multiplication, we want you to know that there's two different ways. We want you to know the two different, uh, sorry, two different ways to do multiplication. We want you to know three different ways to do division. Excuse me. And uh, to do the multiplication, we're going to do the problem five times three mod seven. So the first way we want, we want to talk about is repeated addition on a clock. Well, just like we did in uh, addition, we need a clock first. And uh, in this clock, we start at zero, just like in addition on, on a table or anywhere. Uh, if you were to do addition, you would take, uh, first you start with zero and then you put uh, seven, and then you put three on, and seven plus three is ten, you count all the pieces. So similarly, what we're going to do is we're going to do, in multiplication, you put groups of, of beads or whatever your manipulative is. And so here we have five groups of three. And so you put a group of three on, a group of three on, a group of three on, and then you count them all up, and you would see that you have 15. And so similarly, what we're going to do is instead of putting them on a table, we're going to put them on this wrapped number line or this clock. So we go one, two, I'm missing a one. <laughs> uh, how about that? So, uh, so we go one, two, three, and that's our one group of three. And then we go one, two, three, and that's two groups of three. And we're trying to get to five. One, two, three, that's three groups of three. One, two, three, that's four groups of three. One, two, three, that's five groups of three. And so there's our, um, there's our five groups of three, and we landed on one. So our answer is one. So the other way to do it is just to multiply and divide. Uh, and then mod and keep the remainder. So, um, like we said, uh, well, not like we said, but 5 times 3 without the mod equals 15. Then you divide that 15 by the mod, and you get uh, 2 remainder 1. And so this one is the same as this one. And so similarly, um, you could write out you could write out um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we need a 0. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And uh, this is our number line. And what we could do on this one is we would go uh, 1, 2, 3, there's uh, 1 group of 3, 1, 2, 3, 2 groups of 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 groups of 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 groups of 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 3. And then um, you have to mod. So, and what is 15? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, uh, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1. So here, 15 is 1. Um, this is just that clock wrapped up, and uh, it's an unrolled clock. So here's one time around the clock, there's two times around the clock, and then uh, a little bit over. So that's the, the 1. So that's in the same exact thing as this. You're just going around. So if that helps you, great. If it doesn't, then don't and don't use it. Just use your, your normal clock. So that's the two different ways to do multiplication. So division, do um, the first one is missing factors. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do 7, 7 divided by... 5 in 11, in mod 11. So um, the thing is, we don't know how to do this yet. And so uh, what we can do is turn it into a problem we do know how to do. And so what we do is we use we use fact families. And so the other two fact families is 7 divided by uh, blank equals 5, as well as uh, 5 times blank equals 7, and blank times 5 equals 7. So there's our fact families. And the reason this is called missing factors because in multiplication, these two numbers here are called factors. Uh, these two numbers here are called factors. And uh, they also have some other names which we talked about in class is that this is the uh, multiplier and this is the multiplicand. And so, um, anyway, so this is a question that we know how to answer. Uh, we draw our, our clock, 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's our clock. 
And the thing is, is that we know we have groups of five, but we don't know how many groups to get to seven. So if we start at zero and we go in groups of five until we get to seven, then we would know how many groups of five we need to get to seven. So that's the idea. So we start at zero, we go one, two, three, four, five, uh, there's one group of five. One, two, three, four, five. There's two. One, two, three, four, five. There's three. One, two, three, four, five. There's four. One, two, three, four, five. There's um, five. One, two, three, four, five. There's six. One, two, three, four, five. There's seven. One, two, three, four, five. There's our seven. This is eight. So we said. I know we have groups of five, I just don't know how many groups of five to get to seven. So we started out like a multiplication problem until, and we went in groups of five until we got to our number seven, and so the answer is eight. So since this is eight, this is also eight, because eight groups of five is the same as five groups of eight. And then, because this is a fact family, we know that eight goes here as well as here. So that's the missing factor method. Just switch it to a multiplication problem with your missing factors, uh, using fact families, and then uh, solve that problem using um, your clock, or an unrolled number line if you want. So we know this answer is 8. I'm going to move it over here just to keep it out of the way. So uh, repeated, and not to confuse us, so repeated subtraction on a clock is just like this repeated uh, addition, except where we go backwards. And it, in addition, we went clockwise, and in subtraction, we went um, counterclockwise. And similarly, we do the exact same thing in division. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's our clock 11. And the, the deal is, is just like we switched this here, we can kind of think of this as a multiplication problem, right? As 5, or blank times 5 equals 7. So if that was the problem, we, we don't know what we have, but we, um, we don't know how many times we went, but we knew we went in groups of 5. And so, um, and we got to seven, we landed on seven. And so the deal is, is if we, that was multiplication, we'd be going around until we hit seven, just like we just did a second ago to solve that problem, that exact same problem. So if we start on seven and go back to where we start in multiplication, which is zero, then we, in groups of five, by repeated subtraction, then we would know what that answer is just the same. So if we start on seven and take away groups of five, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then that's uh, one group of 5, so that's subtracting, 7 minus 5 is 2, right? So that's subtracting, so there's one group of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. We got to our zero. So we started at 7 and went back to 0, undoing our multiplication. So multiplication and division are inverses of each other. And so, uh, meaning if you do multiplication and then divide, the same thing, you get back to the same number. Or if you divide and then multiply, you're going to get back to the same number. So they're inverses of each other. So if we just undo our multiplication by repeated subtraction and get back to, uh, to 0 and see how many times we did, um, we're going to get the same answer. So here's this 8 one more time. Now, there's one more way to do this and um, that we want you to know. And this is uh, uh, multiply by the inverse. And so to understand inverses, we also um, have to understand, uh, sorry, yes, to understand inverses we, and find them, we also have to understand what an identity is. So identity equals do nothing. So in uh, lots of different things, identity uh, in math, identity means do nothing. So uh, for example, 3 plus blank equals 3. We started with 3, we end with 3. We did nothing. But the question is, is what gets us there? And whatever the answer is here is this is the identity. So 3 plus 0, as you guys know, equals 3. And so 0 is the additive identity. Because if we change the, the reason we have to talk about the, the uh, operation is because, well, what if we change it to multiplication? Is it the same answer? Well, 3 times 0 does not equal 3. And so it depends on what the operation is. So um, 3 times the identity equals 3, but what's the 
uh, multiplicative identity. So 3 times, as you guys know, 1 equals 3. So in multiplication, the identity is 1. In addition, the identity is 0. So, um, and multiplication, it's 1. So uh, identities and inverses have this neat thing, uh, this neat uh, correlation, this uh, neat relation. And so uh, this is how you solve for identities. You figure out identities. And how you solve for inverses is kind of the same. The question is a little bit different, though. Instead of using to solve for the inverse, it's, it's number um, operation. the inverse of the number, right, because that's what we're going to be looking for, equals the identity of the operation. So, for example, if we did our 3, and we're going to do plus, what is the inverse of 3? And um, in addition, so the identity for addition is 0. So let me draw a line here just so you don't get confused. This is for identities and this is for inverses. And so inverses, inverses excuse me, uses uh, identities for in the specific operation. So in addition, in addition, it's zero. So what makes this true? Well, three plus um, negative three equals zero. And so that's that. Negative three is the additive identity um, excuse me, <laughs> negative 3 is the additive inverse of 3 because this plus it equals the additive identity. So if we change it to uh, multiplication, then 3 times what equals um, not 0, we're doing multiplying, so it's 1. So, uh, and this one is actually going to be 3 times um, one third. You guys know that. So three times one third equals one. And the interesting thing here is, as you can see, that this is different than this. Um, and so the problem, it's not a problem, these are actually true, absolutely true when you're talking about rational numbers, or real numbers uh, for that matter, but rational numbers is a little more restrictive. Um, but uh, one third exists in rational numbers, and negative 3 does as well, and so it actually even exists in integers. But the idea is is that in mod 11 or mod whatever, it does not exist. This does not exist and neither does this. Oh, sorry, neither does this. And so our, our question becomes is, well, what's the inverse of, of what we're looking for uh, in a different mod group? And so that we're going to use that idea here in a second. So we know that multiplication and uh, multiplication and division are inverses of each other themselves, the operation, because you do want to do the other and it, it get back to itself. And so what we can do is we can change this problem into a, excuse me, a multiplication problem. We have to keep the same base, um, same mod group, but this five has to change as well. We changed it to the inverse, so this number has to be an inverse. And so, um, these are actually going to give us the exact same answers. The question becomes is what's 5 in in mod 11? Well, sorry, the inverse of 5 in mod 11. Well, in uh, not mod 11, just in real, it would be 1 over 5. But but we're in mod 11, so what the, what is that? So we need a little bit of scratch paper, and we come down here and say, um, well, I know the relationship is, this is times, because we're, we're doing times here, and it's 11, and we were looking for the inverse of 5 equals 1. And the reason we pick 1, chose, well, it's not really choosing, but the reason we use 1 is because times is 1. So what is the inverse of 5 uh, in mod 11? And so the way we solve for that is simply drawing our clock again. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And uh, we do it just like we've done lots of different times. We need to know how many groups of time, 
how many groups of five we need until we get one. So one, two, three, four, five, there's one, one, two, three, four, five, there's two, one, two, three, four, five, there's three, one, two, three, four, five, there's four, one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, there's five, one, two, three, four, five, there's six, one, two, three, four, five, remember we're trying to get here, five is uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, that's eight, one, two, three, four, five, we made it, it's nine. Five times nine equals one. So, similarly, that means, this is really yucky, nine. that means that the inverse of five equals nine. And since we know this now, we can rewrite this equation here as seven um, times nine equals what? So all three of these things say the exact same thing. Well, I'm just going to use this one because I, I like that one the most. You could use this if you like, um, but I like this one the best. So 7 times 9 is 63. That's just if we, if we do 7 times 9 without the base, that equals 63. Then you take 63 and divide it by our 11, uh, our, our mod, modulus, and uh, then you take, and that equals, well, uh, it would be 55, which is 5, 5 times, and 63 minus 55 is 8. And so here it is. Here's this 8, which is also the answers here, as well as the ones we got previously. So those are the three different ways uh, for division that we want you to know, and the two different ways for multiplication. Hope that helped. You should be able to get through your homework now. Thanks.